Success transcends cities. As one of the world's most respected business leaders, I know what it takes. Join me now as I sit down with fellow leaders and we share our insights into how you can be successful. My name is Jeffrey Hazlett, and this is All Business. Hey, in today's environment, the world of investing can seem intimidating and impractical for some. We all know the importance of growing our wealth, but how do we protect it? That's a key question that I want to know. My guest today co-founded an investment platform that can give new possibilities to the average individual and the most seasoned investor alike to create financial freedom. Randy Tate is the co-founder and CEO of iFlip. Randy, welcome to All Business with Jeffrey Hazlett. Jeff, thanks for having me, man. Super excited to be here. Well, and I must say right off the bat that I'm also on the board of directors and investors. So I'm a little bit, you know, in favor of having you on the show and talking about this, but only because of what you've done for me and you've done for others. And Randy, my first question is the economy is challenging right now. What do you think the main takeaway should be for the individual investor right now? Well, right now, Jeff, we, we're in a we're in a season, if you will, um, volatility, uncertainty. You know, turn on the news one day to the next. We don't know what's coming. Companies are struggling. We are in a we are in a transition, and we believe that's going to be the season for a while. So one of the things we've been encouraging people to do is because the environment's changing, because of volatility and uncertainty, it's probably a good time to take a second look at the way you're investing and what the parameters are around your investment strategies. So we're having a lot of conversations with people about this, helping them take a second look at what they're planning for the future. Well, you you mentioned that second look. So when you encourage someone to take a second look at their investment strategy, what are you emphasizing exactly? Well, let me ask you a question, Jeff. Um, what you know, do you think uh, JP Morgan and BlackRock as institutions are investing the way they're advising their folks to invest? Are they drinking their own Kool-Aid? Are they putting things into a buy and hold for 40 years? Now, I got to tell you, Randy, I, I love some of those companies. There, and a lot of the guys that run them and the women that run them, both men and women that run them, are good friends of mine. But no, I don't think that they're they're giving me the same advice they're taking for themselves. No, they're not. Because otherwise, they would tell everybody to go buy the S&P 500, leave your money alone, and, and then they don't make any money. And so yeah. that's that's what we're talking about, a second look. Is the buy and hold strategy that's been the the go to forever is it the still the tried and true method for investing long term that's the second look we want people to to think about all right so tell me how the company works because you're a little bit different than say algorithms you're an ai investment company tell me how it works and what's different between the two yeah well uh, we treat protection aggressively you know, for football people, I'll use an analogy. The 86 Bears defense was practically an offense, right? That's the whole idea. And th it's extremely important for us to think about it that way. How do we protect ourselves? The reality of it is this, Jeff. Skipping the big drops is far more important than trying to hit the highs. And the buy and hold methodology that's been there forever forces you to absorb both. Anybody listening to this, anybody watching this that has traditional buy and hold investing got their rear ends kick in 2022. They absolutely did because that's the methodology. They also got it kicked in 2020 because of Mr. COVID. And so when we really start to dig into it, what do we do differently? We protect. Now, how do we do it is also very different. We are not an algorithm. Although we have algorithms on our platform, we are an AI platform, meaning this, our algorithms are so seasoned now, they're so machine learning that they change their own rules. They actually change the rules every day, whether they should be buying, holding, or in cash. We also treat cash as a position. We were 80% cash December 28th of 2021. So we skipped the majority of that downturn during 2022. Very different than a traditional investor would behave. Well, and your results show it. And by the way, when you talk about the bears, you're supposed to say the bears, 
I just want to point okay. that out right off the bat. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> you just got to be able to do that. But, you yeah. know, when you look at how that you operate, I mean, you've been able to skip those things. I know my own portfolio, and I'll say this, is up into the 20% when everybody else is seeing that on the other side is negative losses. And yep. most of the investment world is focused on performance and what we call, and I think you referred to this before too, beating the market, right? Everybody's about beating the market, staying ahead. I just mentioned that just a second ago. But you have a slightly different perspective. Tell us about your thoughts on um, on protection. Yeah, again, it, it's the continuation of of that last statement I made. When you think about beating the market, most talking heads will tell you that you can't beat the market, so you need to get into good funds because the funds are going to protect you from the risk associated with owning the market. What they don't tell you is that the buy and hold mentality itself is the riskiest endeavor because you're then forced to absorb not just the lows, you get the highs, but you absorb the lows. Skipping those lows, protecting yourself against a 2022, that is the way in which you aggressively protect. And you would then in turn, don't just beat the market, you abolish it. We were 20% or so ahead of the market itself in 2022. So that, that's the whole foundation of it. We got to make sure we get that. So you're trying to change the way people look at their investment, their money. And are you receiving any kind of pushback? And if so, how are you helping them to see investing the way you do? It's an education process. You know, when we founded this company in 2016, it, it was because of the way in which people look at their money. They don't think about it. They give the professional person their money. They let them manage it. And they pray that in 20 or 30 years, they'll have more than they started, which by virtue of the market itself, they will. However, we want people to look at money management as something that with technology, you can really, when we say democratize, we overuse that word all over the place, but we've democratized, you know, taxi cabs. Uh, now you just get an app on your phone. We've democratized videos. That's why there's no longer a blockbuster. This is the next industry that needs to be democratized. People need to look at this and say, hey, this is as simple as an app that I can put on my phone or on my computer that will allow AI to do the heavy lifting and let the mathematics manage it on an equal playing field. Everybody wins when you do it this way because the math is going to tell you the statistical likelihood. And then it takes the emotion out of it and does it for you. Versus buy it, hold it, don't ever look at it, don't look at it because it could be bad if you look at it. And then we'll see where we're at in 25 years. We want people to look at it. I want you to look at it every day, every week, every month. I know you look at your account. Look at your account. See what it's doing. And then if you want to make a change, push the button, make a change. That's simple.